What I want to talk about today is revolvers that are 357 Magnum revolvers, quote unquote, and revolvers that are simply chambered for 357 Magnum. I know that sounds kind of strange to hear, and a lot of people are going to think, what are you talking about? Well, there is a significant difference between a 357 Magnum revolver and a revolver chambered in 357 Magnum. And a lot of people that, that know what I'm talking about are going to be like, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. So the reason why I'm making this video is because a lot of times people come to me and they ask, hey, I want to get a revolver. What's the best first revolver I can get? And there's a lot of different options, and a lot of times these people give me ideas of what they want to do. And you know, I try to support their ideas, but at the same time I have my own significant ideas. A lot of times I say, oh, I want to get a 22 revolver because of cost of the ammo, and I come back saying, well, if you reload your ammo, if you get into that, you'll actually, you know, the ammo price difference between 30 Special and 22 isn't that big. Other people say, I want to get a 9mm, and I say, you yeah, know, that makes sense to some degree. However, you have all these other different uh, negative issues that come along with that. So I always end up suggesting a 38 Special or a 357 Magnum, or 357 Magnum chambered revolver for, for most people. And a lot of times it comes down to, um, well, I want to get a snub nose or something like that, or, or maybe it's, it's a range gun. There's a lot of different first revolvers that people want. And a lot of times it comes down to, like, maybe a name brand, Smith & Wesson 38 Special. If this was like a 642, uh, it would cost maybe 350 bucks. And then you go with a 357 Magnum chambered Taurus, you know, pretty similar price point. And then there's other people that I would suggest a real 357 Magnum revolver to, like the Smith & Wesson 686 or a Taurus 66 or something along, the, along those lines. And what the big significant difference is between a, a, a revolver chambered in 357 Magnum versus a true 357 Magnum revolver is that a true 357 Magnum revolver such as the Smith & Wesson 686 or a Ruger GP100 or a Taurus Model 66 is that they are designed to fire 357 Magnum as its main ammunition. A steady diet of 357 Magnum for the life of that revolver. And I would go one step further and say that if that was what you're going to fire, you should you should fire 158 green bullets rounds because a lot of times what you get is the the shorter ammunition, the shorter not ammunition, but the shorter bullets in a 125 or a 110 grain. They'll they'll go into the forcing cone. And there's that little bit of a more of a gap there where, where a hot gas has come out and kind of it can erode your uh, forcing call a little bit, even with 30 special ammo. But that's a topic for another day. And while the true 357 Magnum revolver is meant for a steady diet of 357 Magnum ammo, a gun like this, this Taurus 605, that is simply chambered in 357 Magnum, is not designed for that. Essentially what this is, is a 38, 38 Special Revolver that can also accept a limited diet of 357 Magnum ammunition. And you should use mostly 38 Specials in a revolver that is simply chambered in 357 Magnum versus a true 357 Magnum revolver. So I'm going to show some of the parts on, on these revolvers up close a little bit and you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. Now when we look at this 357 Magnum chambered Taurus 605, here's your forcing cone here. And I just want to get kind of a, an idea of how big this is, how thick it is. And I want to compare it here to this um, 38 Special Revolver. Actually this forcing cone in this 38 Special is actually thicker than this revolver that is chambered in 357 Magnum. Now if I grab the real true 357 Magnum revolver, I want you to look at the forcing cone size on this here. And the forcing cone is basically the inside of the barrel. Um, there is a significant difference here in the size of the forcing cones on a true 357 Magnum revolver. Also pay attention to the amount of steel on the side of the barrel here. And this is a Smith & Wesson. Rugers are built even tougher than that when it comes to their real 357 Magnum revolvers. But look how much steel is on the side of the forcing cone versus how much steel is on the side of the forcing cone on this Taurus here. 
and what you have on this 357 Magnum chambered is not much difference in the amount of metal in a 38 Special Revolver. So this basically meets the bare minimum for for pressure, how much pressure it can handle to fire 357 Magnum cartridges through it. However, it's not meant for a steady diet of it. Really, the only difference between a lot of 38 Special Revolvers and small revolvers chambered and 357 Magnum is basically the, the material they're built on of. The frame on this revolver here is about the same size as this one. However, this one's made out of steel. This one's made out of an aluminum alloy. And really, that's where the 35,000 PSI pressure of the 357 Magnum cartridge comes into play. The cylinders on 38 Special Revolvers, all modern ones, are made out of steel. So if you took this cylinder off this 38 Special Revolver and you bored it out to 357 Magnum length and you were to put the cylinder on a steel 38 Special or um, 357 Magnum frame, modern ones anyway, for the most part you'd be able to fire 357 Magnum ammunition out of it and it would not you know, essentially blow open the gun. A lot of people have the idea that it's going to pop open the cylinder. I mean, the side of the cylinder will blow off. And that's really not where the pressure goes on with the uh, 357 Magnum. Most of the pressure goes into the frame. The part of the frame that holds the barrel in place. The part of the frame that holds the crane of the, 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 the uh, cylinder in place. That's where the pressure is taking on a lot of the pressure. So that part would definitely break if you tried to fire 357 Magnum pressured rounds through this. Essentially double charged 38 special rounds. Um, it would this would crack the top strap would crack. It's made out of um, aluminum alloy. It'd probably blow the whole barrel right off of after a few rounds. Um, as where you know you encase something like this in steel, that's not going to happen. But when you take a real true 357 Magnum revolver and you just look at the amount of steel that is there in comparison to a revolver simply chambered. And 357 Magnum, a big difference. So your rundown is, if you want your first revolver to be a 357 Magnum, you have to really kind of be honest with yourself of what ammunition you're going to fire. If you want a small pocketable 357 Magnum that's capable of firing 357 Magnum ammo, a limited diet of them, there's nothing wrong with something that's just simply chambered in 357 Magnum. You can fire all the 38 specials you want through it. It's going to be able to take it just fine. Now when we go into a true 357 Magnum revolver, if you decide, I really want to shoot 357 Mag, that's all I ever want to shoot, that's all I'm ever going to shoot, definitely get a true 357 Magnum revolver. And they do make these in shorter barrels, 2.5 inch barrels for the 686, um, 3 inch barrels for the Ruger GTP 100. I don't know about the Taurus models, what they have for barrel lengths, but that's just a big rundown of it because you really don't want to get a revolver chambered in 357 Magnum. It's a small frame revolver and say, I have a 357 Magnum. I can just shoot 357 through it all day long. And, and my answer is, no, you don't have a 357 Magnum. You have a 38 Special that's uh, chambered. For a limited diet of 357 Magnum. If you want to shoot the Magnums, you get a Magnum. So, hope I didn't ramble on too long, but that's the difference here. And your first uh, revolver, I would definitely say 38 Special or 357 Magnum or 357 Magnum chambered. But the choice is up to you what you're going to use, what ammunition you're going to use, how much you're going to use it. Rarely fire the gun. This is fine. A little. 38 special revolver and if all you're going to shoot is 38, that's fine. You're going to fire a lot of 38 specials, um, limited magnums, you still want a small gun, go with a 30, 357 chamber revolver. If you're going to fire anything you want all day long, every day of the week, whether it be magnums, specials, whatever you feel like, get a 357 magnum revolver. So that's the differences real quick. Well, not real quick, but as quick as I can, I can uh, articulate the information. So. Tell me what you think in the comments below. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.